I wanted to finish the week by talking about something a little bit annoying, but equally something quite important that many creators don't usually look at, and that is from the Creator Blog site, where Susan Wojcicki has made another series of statements and claims that I believe contradict a lot of the things she has done since she was or became head of YouTube. It should now be noted, there are many things she has accomplished in her time. Let's start with the most obvious, shall we? As many of you know, she oversaw what many content creators called the Adpocalypse 1.0, 2.0, and of course, the more recent 3.0, because we're good with names, yo, and we like trilogies, even if much like the typical trilogy, the third one's always the worst one. And master monetization of content essentially siding with advertisers over creators. An introduction of greater filters, which includes moderators, some of whom are claimed to be hired and outsource, to remove content and channels and designate whether some are approvable for advertisers or not. As stated, deletion of channels cause, and insert arbitrary reason here, hate speech rules which are nebulous, overall stricter rules on people's freedoms to speak which is contradictory, and I challenge you all to do this, Google Susan Wojcicki, the first things that will come up will be claims that she makes which are actually in this blog, but if you go back far enough, she'll continue to repeat that freedom of speech is important, but alienation and abandonment of creators in favour of corporations and networks. That's why your number one channel's T-series and not PewDiePie. The easiest strike system, and this is the final one, to abuse and not suffer consequences for. Do I need a picture of Onision for that? He is, after all, the correct person to use to best exemplify someone that has abused a system and not really paid the price that is in the terms of service for it. Wojcicki has claimed many times over the years that free speech openness is important. Protecting the right for people to express themselves, be creative, is important. It's why every year those cringe fest rewind videos are mass downvoted to the point now your most unpopular videos are your own. Congratulations. Fortnite was dead when you did the last one. You should have learnt your lesson. Now I really want to go over to this blog, because it is quite something. It's done every year four times, three times, four times, doesn't matter. It's done a lot, and they're usually cringy and stupid, and there are masses of contradictions in them, and I would very much like for you to enjoy them like I am. So, as I do every quarter, ah, four times then, I'd like to pause and reflect on my priorities and how I can help you be successful on YouTube. Well, I don't have a few million in the bank, so I'm assuming I can't be the kind of person you want to help. Hmm. But rather than our usual update on this quarter's highlight and lowlights, I want to take a minute to talk about something that is incredibly important to me personally and the future of this platform. Openness and how we balance that with our responsibility to protect the community. By pushing them further away, you protect them by denying them their right to speak. When you removed Alex Jones, you did it under the guise that he was abusing the metadata because he claimed he was a new source. A lot of it was quite sensationalist, and I really wished he'd just tagged it all as entertainment, because then you wouldn't have as much of a leg to stand on. But there was some truth to a lot of the things he said. By deleting him, you were denying everyone else the chance to laugh at him. And the reason he got popular, by the way, was because the sources they were relying on people, that is, the general populace, the normies, the millennials, the boomers, the Gen Xers. Well, they were kind of not trusting them anymore. They found Alex Jones to be a far more entertaining source of information, fiction, and supplements. It is well known, well established, and this is not me trying to sound salty, but I'm sure someone's going to say it is, that you don't care about creators. I find it very fascinating that you claim so much to want to protect them and support them, but the one thing not a single creator can get from you is any level of support. Even some of the big guys can't get your attention. Now you could attribute that to being many, many creators and you are spread thin. Sure, let's go with that. But if you're going to make claims to want to help people and then not do it, then chances are you're lying. Occam's razor and everything. YouTube is built on the premise of openness. It was. Now it's built on money and advertisers and networks basically anyone that can give you the money you want. Based on this open platform, millions of creators around the world have connected with global audiences, and many of them have built thriving businesses in the process. That's a dwindling number, I'm sure. 
but openness comes with its challenges, which is why we have community guidelines that we update on an ongoing basis. Most recently, this includes our hate speech policy and upcoming harassment policy. I have a strange feeling quite a lot of people are going to start flagging response videos because me feels, because certain types of comedy and approaches might be deemed hateful or and or harassment. When you create a place designed to welcome many different voices, some will cross the line. Well, that's Magog screwed then. Bad actors <laughs> will try to exploit platforms for their own gain, even as we invest in the systems to stop them. You mean continually inserting algorithms that continue to damage the product? Tell me, when everyone's getting demonetized, what money do you make? Because I can't imagine it's much. I can't imagine you're being carried by the few Nickelodeon presenters that you're deeming okay enough to continue to be monetized. I say this after seeing quite a number of creators on Twitter, some of whom have millions of subscribers, who get millions of views a day, who are being demonetized all the time, to the point where they have made no money for quite a while. I find it quite fascinating myself that the videos that do well on my channel are the ones that get demonetized, and the ones that are monetized don't do well. Now, that could be entirely because of the subject matter. But I just want to leave that hanging. Who knows? It could be other things. You are, after all, breaking the very thing you don't know how it runs. Interesting, really. It's like a bad mechanic. As more issues come into view, a rising chorus of policymakers, press, and pundits are questioning whether an open platform is valuable or even viable. Well, it's both, if it is in fact open. But when you are going out of your way to silence people, people start to question your motivations, many of whom have noticed mostly right-leaning creators are being hammered. That would lead many people to believe, much like the silencing of right-leaning commenters on Twitter, that you are biased. It'd be hard to believe that you're not at this point, because it's happened so much. Despite these concerns, I believe preserving an open platform is more important than ever. Press X to doubt. First, openness leads to opportunity. Today's creators have built an entire creative economy and are redefining the face of media which goes directly against what you're being leaned up against. You know, those advertisers that like the media as opposed to the more blunt creators who aren't as influenced as the media are by some political bias. Unless they are, of course, a political commentator, in which case they are going to be biased, of course. Not going to ignore that, just stating content creators, for the most part, from what I've noticed, are more open at least about their biases. Unlike media, they try to be more deceptive. It's why media approval rating is lower than your US president's. Hmm, fascinating. These creators would not have had a chance to break through in a more close media landscape. Creators like Swedish robotics enthusiast and blind lifestyle vlogger, I'm not including names, I don't care enough, both unconventional in their appeal and passed over by traditional media, are finding huge success on YouTube managing businesses, selling merchandise, creating jobs. You don't suppose it's because they're completely different genres. You mentioned media just before it. That does include the news. Neither of these two channels do that. Go figure you would totally omit it in favour of what you'd consider to be professional and factual, which is something you mention in this blog, with you continuing to mention how some creators have created jobs. Which is fantastic, of course. Well done to those creators that have done that. I think the fact that you've pushed so many creators away from this platform, those that poked fun at things, those that talked about current events, under the guise of either them not being factual or them having a certain political leaning as you have deemed it, or not suitable for advertisers because the odd profanity leaks out, is quite unacceptable. It is why BitChute is growing. Of course, I wish it was bigger. Subscribe link below. But it is quite fascinating to see just how much you're willing to try to make this seem better than it is. I'm going to significantly skip over a lot of stuff and go straight to the four bullet points near the end. 1. We remove content that violates our policy as quickly as possible. We're always looking to make our policies clearer and more effective as we've done with pranks, challenges, child safety and hate speech. Right. We aim to be thoughtful when we make these updates and consult a wide variety of experts to inform our thinking. Doubt. I also appreciate that when policies aren't working for the creator community, you let us know. Because you'll listen, right? No. Doubt. One area we've heard loud and clear needs an update is creator-on-creator -creator harassment. I'm sure some creators have been harassed. I really am. 
and earlier I mentioned Onision, but the amount of criticism and flack he's taken recently by Repsion should be clear now, that's not harassment. That's one guy being a complete dipstick and then being utterly pummeled by the other, and rightly so. Same with Boogie with some of the comments he's been making recently with regards to Nazis. Rightly hammered, not harassment. Two, we raise up authoritative voices when people are looking for breaking news and information. Right, how do you determine that? I have regularly covered news stories and been considered also a stealthy YouTuber because nobody knows who I am yet I somehow have managed to hit 52,000. By the way, thank you for that. Really appreciate it, it actually means the world to me. So how do you determine who the authoritative voices are? Hmm? Are they the Young Turks? Are they David Pakman? Are they Secular Talk? Or are they other people that have taken their time to break the sources down? How do you do this? I'd very much like to know that. Am I about to get a big boost in subscribers because I might be an authoritative voice even though I'm not? Hmm? We reduce the spread, three by the way, we reduce the spread of content that brushes right up against our policy line. Already in the US we've made changes to recommendations earlier this year. We've seen a 50% drop of views from recommendations to this type of content. Political commentary. Fantastic. Four, and we set a high bar for what channels can make money on our site. Rewarding trusted, eligible creators. Not all content allowed on YouTube is going to match what advertisers feel is suitable for their brand. That's interesting because I've recently started doing videos where I break down people, and there's a bit of a contradiction here because a number of them shouldn't be monetized, but they are. The Sarah Silverman one did really well and is still monetized, and on it is a picture of her in blackface. How you determine this is remarkable. It is inconsistent. So don't tell me for a second you are rewarding trusted creators. No, you are rewarding whoever the person reviewing the video is rewarding creators. I'm confusing myself. Basically, whoever it is moderating is inconsistent. They're all fickle. They are all biased. They are not doing their damn job. This video will more than likely be demonetized because the title says Susan Wojcicki, Contradictory Incarnate. Or Contradiction Incarnate? I'm sure one of you could tell me in the comments. I, I, although the title is there, I should be able to see it. The point is, you don't know crap about what you're doing with your business. The moderators deal with it, and I say deal with it loosely, because they just demonetize anything that talks about news, unless it is one of the major news outlets. So the authoritative voices are quite simply those over others. Alternative media or alternative sources get absolutely hammered. The creators you protect and insulate are the most child-friendly people you can think of, because that's the audience you want to cater to, really. You, to me, seem more like a service that wants to become the new Disney streaming service. And I say the new one because there is a current one, so you'd want to be like that. This all feels tinfoil hatty and like me moaning, but your blogs raise a number of questions with how utterly feckless you are at handling your business. Too many creators have suffered because you think you are doing what is right. Many people are complaining, and I'm sure there are many legitimate points to be made about many comments you made in your blog, but your actions and what you actually do completely undermine the very notion you put forward that you are for us. You stand up for us. You protect our right to speak. Rewarding trusted eligible creators. Hmm. Press X to doubt, I guess.